I have fielded so many emails that ask me to make a video about this and now that I'm finally doing it, I just want you guys to work through this with me. We're gonna make everything make sense and seem logical so that you once and for all understand the differences between these four very similar diseases. So what we're talking about today is cholelithiasis, cholecystitis, cholecholelithiasis, and cholangitis, also sometimes called ascending cholangitis. Now, the first thing we need to go over before we even start is which of these is the most severe and which of these is the least severe. And that's why I have this slide. At the top, starting with cholelithiasis, that is the least severe of these four disease processes. But cholangitis at the bottom is the most severe. Just keep that in the back of your head as we move through this so you can kind of triage what's important when you get a question about one of these on your USMLE. Now we're going to go over the biliary tree and this is the picture that we're going to use throughout the duration of this lecture. What this shows here is that you have a liver which is drained by a right and left hepatic duct. You have a gallbladder that's drained by the cystic duct. Those three ducts come together and form the common bile duct. The common bile duct is also joined by the pancreatic duct, which is not shown here, but the pancreatic duct connects to the big fat common bile duct, and then together all of that flows down and empties into the first part of the duodenum in the small intestine. So let's talk about the four different disease processes that all start with C-H-O-L, and we're going to differentiate them and make sense of them all. So the first one is cholelithiasis. So what a cholelithiasis, what, what does that mean? What that means is that there is stone formation inside of the gallbladder. So what you see here are these red little stones inside of the gallbladder. Now the key to picking this out when they describe a patient to you in the question is that the patient typically will have colicky pain, right? Waxing and waning in the right upper quadrant. Sometimes they'll have cramps and then they'll disappear and then they'll come back and then they'll disappear. That's colicky pain and it's very classic of cholelithiasis. And it's oftentimes worse with fatty foods because as you should be well aware, when the gallbladder contracts, it secretes a substance that is used to break down fats. And that is really the job of the gallbladder. So that's why this colicky pain is worse Sometimes in the question stem, they'll tell you that a patient ate a cheeseburger two hours ago and has had this off and on pain in the right upper quadrant. The thing that you need to remember is that first of all, stones in the gallbladder is fine. If it's not obstructing the gallbladder or not causing symptoms, but just happens to be an incidental finding on imaging, you can leave it alone. You don't have to do anything about it. It's only when the pain becomes really, really bad that you need to treat it. So let's talk about diagnosis and treatment. To diagnose cholelithiasis, you would do a right upper quadrant ultrasound. Very simple. That's always the right answer. If you suspect cholelithiasis, you do a right upper quadrant ultrasound. And what you'll see is something called acoustic shadowing. Now, I recommend that you Google what acoustic shadowing looks like. But basically, because you have these stones inside of the gallbladder, they're obstructing the light in such a way that it looks like there are these projected shadows coming across the gallbladder. And that shows up on ultrasound. And that's very pathognomonic for gallbladder cholelithiasis because it tells you that there are stones sitting in there. The treatment for cholelithiasis is elective cholecystectomy. Now the reason that elective is in there is because that word's important. You don't have to do this right away. You can take out that gallbladder but it's not an emergent procedure. You, the, the, the gallbladder coming out really depends on the symptoms of the patient and that's the bottom line. Now not included on this slide are the difference between cholesterol gallstones and pigmented gallstones and I suggest that you familiarize yourself with the two of them but just know that there are a couple types of stones that can be found in the gallbladder and you should also know what contributes to each of them so instances where you'll get cholesterol stones is when you have supersaturation of cholesterol instances when you'll get pigmented stones usually have to do with hemolysis those are some things to file away in the back of your mind but the goal of today's lecture is to really help you differentiate cholelithiasis from the other hepatobiliary disease processes. So again, if I were to rapidly summarize cholelithiasis, I would say that it's stones that are formed in the gallbladder as a result of either cholesterol supersaturation or hemolysis, forming one of two different types of stones. The patient classically has right upper quadrant colicky pain. They usually don't have a fever or any other systemic signs. You diagnose it with a right upper quadrant ultrasound because it's cheap and non-invasive, and you do an elective cholecystectomy because you don't have to take it out right away since it's not seriously life-threatening. That is cholelithiasis. 
Now we're going to move on and talk about something a little bit different. The next thing is cholecystitis. So let's start about the basic bare bones difference between cholecystitis and cholelithiasis. Cholelithiasis, lith, L-I-T-H, means stones. So there were a bunch of stones in the chole, cholelithiasis. Cholecystitis is inflammation. Itis, of course, means inflammation. And cystitis means inflammation in the cystic duct. So how this works is a stone gets lodged in the cystic duct, and then everything behind that stone becomes inflamed, so the cystic duct and the gallbladder. Now, cholecystitis. It makes perfect sense if you think about the name. The cystic duct is inflamed, and the gallbladder behind it is inflamed. So how do you differentiate these on physical exam? Of course, both patients, a cholecystitis patient and a cholelithiasis patient, have stones. The difference is that in cystitis, there's inflammation because the stone is lodged in the cystic duct. Okay? So this is cystic duct obstruction. Cholelithiasis is just stones hanging out. Nothing's become inflamed or obstructed. This patient will have a Murphy sign. That's really high yield, and you need to be familiar with it. They'll describe it to you. They'll say that the patient takes a deep breath in, and the physician kind of pushes their fingers and adds pressure around the edge of the liver. When they do this, the liver and the gallbladder drop down onto the physician's hands. And when that happens, because the, the cystic duct in the gallbladder is so inflamed, it hurts. So if there's pain, when the patient inhales, and the physician's adding pressure in that right upper quadrant, that's a positive Murphy sign, and that is pathognomonic almost for cholecystitis. So, what's the difference? In cholecystitis, the patient will have constant pain. It's not colicky. It doesn't come and go like in cholelithiasis. It's constant. This gallbladder is inflamed. There's no period where it's inflamed, and then it's not. It's inflamed, and then it's not. In cholelithiasis, those stones are churning around, and that's why you have that colicky pain that comes and goes, because the pain is dependent on the position of the stone. But in cholecystitis, the stone is blocking the cystic duct. The gallbladder is contracting against an obstruction. That's why it's inflamed, and that's why there's constant pain. Now, on labs, they'll give you a fever and a leukocytosis. So if you see an elevated white count and a fever, you have cholecystitis because, again, fever and an elevated white count is classic for inflammation, and cholecystitis is inflammation. To diagnose cholecystitis, you, you still want to do a right upper quadrant ultrasound. Again, that's usually should be your first line guess when it comes to biliary pathology because it's so cheap and not invasive. But if you, if you can't do an ultrasound or if that's not an option, you want to do something called a HIDA scan. Now, I think that you should Google a gallbladder HIDA scan and see what that looks like. But basically, you're seeing, can the gallbladder take up this special kind of dye? If it can, it's all good. But if it can't, it's because the cystic duct is obstructed. So it kind of makes sense what the image looks like. And I suggest that you Google that to see. Treatment here is going to be cholecystectomy. This is a little bit more serious than cholelithiasis. I told you in cholelithiasis, you can do an elective cholecystectomy. But here, you got to take the sucker out. It's inflamed, and you don't want to infarct any area in the biliary tree. So you got to take it out. Um, you just got to remove it. So if I were to summarize cholecystitis in one really quick high-yield manner, I would say that cholecystitis, just as the name implies, is an itis of the cholecyst. In other words, it's inflammation of the cystic duct due to a stone getting in there. There's a positive Murphy sign and constant pain. The reason for this is that the pain is just there because it's all always inflamed. There's no coming and going. The gallbladder is contracting against a closed space, and it's causing the patient lots of pain. The Murphy sign is there because the gallbladder comes down on the physician's hands during this maneuver, and that hurts because it's inflamed. The fever and leukocytosis should tip you off that there's inflammation, which will further help you differentiate it versus cholelithiasis, where there's no inflammation. To diagnose it, you want to do a right upper quadrant ultrasound because it's cheap and non-invasive. But if that's not an option, you want to do a HIDA scan because the HIDA scan shows you if the gallbladder can perfuse this special dye. The treatment is a cholecystectomy, and this is not an elective procedure. The gallbladder has to come out because it's inflamed and you could infarct it. Now, let's go on to the next pathology here, cholecystitis. So let's say that the stone that was in cholecystitis went a little bit further, and this time got lodged in the common bile duct. That's what we have here. So cholidoco just means common bile duct. So the first two letters of common are CO. So cholidocolithiasis. So co for common bile duct, and then lithiasis again means stones. Just like cholelithiasis meant stones in the gallbladder, docolithiasis means colithiasis, common lithiasis. 
So that's where this comes from. This is a common bile duct obstruction. You get proximal inflammation, things before the stone will become inflamed. But usually in a choleodocolithiasis, there's no inflammation. It's just the stone hanging out in there. So there's no fever and there's no leukocytosis. But what there is, is something called obstructive jaundice. So because you can't drain bilirubin from the biliary tree, you have a backup of bilirubin and the patient becomes jaundice, right? They'll become yellow, they'll get scleral icterus, their tongue and their mouth will become yellow, they'll have an increase in their bilirubin levels. What you see here and what's pathognomonic for choleodocolithiasis are dilated hepatic bile ducts. So because the liver is trying to drain into this area that is obstructed, it can't do it. So the two hepatic bile ducts that usually drain from the liver will become dilated because all of that bile flow that's coming out of the liver is backing up. Now, let's talk about the treatment. The treatment's gonna be ERCP. And basically what an ERCP is, is a gastroenterologist will put a scope down and get into the, bio, into the biliary tree. And ERCP, he'll be able to see what is in there and he'll also be able to remove a stone if the stone is in there. So it's really high yield to know that ERCP is both diagnostic and therapeutic. Not only can you see with the scope what's going on, but if you need to, you can remove a stone while you happen to be in there. And that's important because there's an alternative test called an MRCP, and that's only diagnostic. The MRCP cannot remove stones, but the ERCP can. So that's what the treatment is here. So it's both the, the diagnosis and the treatment. The reason that we use ERCP is just it has better sensitivity and specificity for diagnosing choleodocolithiasis when compared to a right upper quadrant ultrasound. A right upper quadrant ultrasound may still show you that there's a stone here, but the ERCP will definitively tell you if there is a stone, and also you can remove it. So choledocolithiasis, if I was gonna summarize it, I would say that it's lithiasis of the cholidoco. Again, cholidoco means common bile duct. Lithiasis means stones. So it's a stone in the common bile duct. Now, for the most part, this causes a little bit of inflammation proximal to the stone, but no fever, no leukocytosis, and no major pain. It, it, it's typically a non-inflammation process, a non-inflammatory process. It does cause an obstructive jaundice. Remember, bile draining from the liver can't drain. It backs up and causes jaundice in the patient and dilates the hepatic bile ducts. If you see the words dilated hepatic bile ducts, the answer is cholidocolithiasis. The treatment and the diagnosis is ERCP. All right, let's talk about the last biliary disease process. It's called cholangitis. Now cholangitis, or sometimes called ascending cholangitis, is when you have a cholidocolithiasis and then you get an infection. That's why cholidocolithiasis needs to be treated promptly with ERCP because it can progress to a cholangitis. Now the reason that they call it an ascending cholangitis is because the stone gets lodged in the common bile duct, just like we saw on the last slide in cholidocolithiasis. What happens next is that because you have this closed system where there's backed up fluid, that is a nidus for infection. So you have this infection that ascends up the biliary tree and causes inflammation and everything proximal to the obstruction. That's really high yield. So you will have Charcot's triad and occasionally Reynolds pentad. Charcot's triad is fever, jaundice, and right upper quadrant pain. You're always going to have Charcot's triad. You, they're, they're always going to give that to you on a physical exam. Fever, jaundice, and right upper quadrant pain. The fever and the right upper quadrant pain are from the inflammation and the jaundice is, for the same reason cholidocolithiasis caused jaundice, you have an obstructive jaundice again. Now, this can progress to something called Reynolds pentad, and that is when you add hypotension and altered mental status. At that point, you're kind of progressing into the realm of this patient might be going into shock, and that's what you get. Oftentimes, this is a misdiagnosis because someone will come in with right, or, right upper quadrant pain, and they won't really know what to do or what to look for, Maybe they'll think it's, um, you know, like a, just a basic stomach issue, but the patient is quickly progressing through these stages and moving into shock. So it's got to be treated emergently. To diagnose this, you do a right upper quadrant ultrasound. The patient's going to be in a ton of pain. You're really not going to want to mess with them. You're just going to get a non-invasive ultrasound. And then you treat this with an emergent ERCP. You have to take out that stone. It's got to go. The patient could go into shock and die, literally, if you don't get this out. And that's why cholangitis is the most severe of these four. Now, Let's think about this. Itis, it means inflammation. Cholangitis, it is the one that kind of sounds the most different from the other three. 
So because it's the most severe and because it's the most different, you can kind of think of the picture mentally and see how different it is. I mean, this is inflammation of the entire biliary tree. It's severe. So let me summarize cholangitis for you in one quick high yield way. Cholangitis, also known as ascending cholangitis, is when there is a stone that gets into the common bile duct and causes an infection. It's basically a cholelithiasis plus an infection. You have Charcot's triad 100% of the time, fever, jaundice, and right upper quadrant pain. If the patient progresses and they get worse, they can develop Reynolds pentad, which is Charcot's triad plus the addition of hypotension and altered mental status. It is a poor prognostic factor and may indicate that the patient is going into shock. To diagnose this, you want to quickly get a right upper quadrant ultrasound because it's non-invasive and will not cause the patient any discomfort, and then do an emergent ERCP to pull out the stone that's obstructing the system. That's it. Here's a summary slide with all four broken into four quadrants. You really want to know the difference between them. I suggest that you review this video and review how the name can tip you off as to what is going on in the disease process. Differentiating these four is extremely high yield, and USMLE and Comelex will commonly give you a patient with vague right upper quadrant symptoms and expect you to interpret labs and interpret specific excerpts from the question stem and determine which of these four it is. These are usually all possible answer choices, so know them well. Good luck.